Hey, what's up, people? Hope everybody's in well and safe. Today we're taking a look at the latest, I believe, in the Iron Factory Legend Skill Transformer line. This is Iron Factory's IFEX43 Primal Commander. So this is an homage to their Optimus Primal. To their Optimus Primal. Optimus Primal from Transformers Beast Wars. But standard packaging. I haven't even taken this out of the box yet. Haven't had time. But today I do. So let's get that done. Oh. Not sealed. Might as well unbox it in front of you guys. Okay, it looks like, looks pretty simple. Let's see if we can't brighten this up a bit. And I'm seeing Optimus Primal, a couple of alternate hands, as well as a gun. The instructions are here in the back. And one thing I do know is that his wings go like that. And right off the bat, I can say this is an impressive looking piece. Okay, so we've got them, got them next to their City Commander, which is their Ultra Magnus. I don't remember what they call it, their Red Alert. That is their Sideswipe mode. It's been used quite a few times. So that's about three and a quarter, three and a half-ish inches tall. Him. While I knock everything around here. City Commander, Ultra Magnus, about four and a quarter. And the guy that we're actually reviewing here, he's a big one. He's about four and three quarters inches tall from what I'm seeing there. Okay. So just to give you guys a quick comparison to pretty standard sizes amongst Iron Factory figures. For other figures that you may own, you have the measurement. So make that measurement happen on your own time. So again, he comes with what looks like two alternate hands here. I don't know exactly what these are for. We'll find out as well as his blaster and of course the figure itself so getting all that out of the way making sure that he's standing fairly straight up looks like he's uh, leaning to the side a bit get those wings back and we're gonna zoom in a bit And great detail into them. To be honest with you, this could easily be a classic size figure with the amount of detail that it has. It's very, very good. In fact, it'd be a very good classic size figure if it was just plain upscaled, just looking at the sculpt alone. You can see he has his backpack there. And okay. And without all the other figures in the way, I'm going to give him one more measurement to see what I get, and again, about four and three quarters inches tall. Making sure we're focused there. Now taking a look at the articulation here. Shoulders. There's uh, 360 roundabout. Okay, this shoulder actually kind of unclips and extends so that he could do parallel. Parallels out really good, surprisingly well. Checking and seeing, making sure there's no butterfly there. There is not. All right, double jointed elbows, okay. 360 bicep swivel. <clears throat> now we're gonna zoom in on the hands there, because I believe they're actually articulated, okay. So two points of articulation on the main fingers, they all work together. And then the thumb can go up and down. Oop. Pop that right off the ball joint, gotta love it, up and down. And then it has a hinge joint there. And that's it, it looks like there's another point of articulation, but there's not, it's a single single hinge there. 
But yeah, pretty good stuff. Oh, man. I'm having the most wonderful time with this camera stand. Sorry, guys. It's a new camera stand, and I'm just getting used to it. Okay, so that's the arm. Looking at the head. Uh, just on a ball joint. This does rock back and forth. It really doesn't help with anything. I believe it's for the transformation, if anything. 360. Not really a long neck, so not a lot of up and down movement. There is there's better side to side than looking upwards and downwards. Waist. 360. There is ab crunch. There's back bend, but it separates. You can see that big gap there. All right, making sure that that's in focus. Looking at the hips. There is movement in the skirts. They move up and down. Now outward, forward, backwards, 360. Hip swivel, double jointed knees, as well as ankle joint or ankle tilt. And then some rock back and forth, not a lot. And then the front of the foot can bend upwards. So lots of options there in terms of balancing. Just really quick. Let's see if we have any. Yep, plenty of record time left. Something quick. I haven't done a superhero landing pose in a while, so let's let's give that a try, just for the sake of my own practice. All right, I got that. It's been so long that honestly, I'm trying to remember how it's supposed to look, even so. Thumb's not supposed to be out like that. All right, so let's lower this stand here. And just give you guys a roundabout of said pose. That ab crunch is just killer. Pretty damn dynamic, especially for such a big bulky piece I like it all right and here he is holding his blaster pretty simple you just peg it into the female insert in his hand and I figured out what the alternate fingers do right there this part of the finger it just unpegs and then these peg in to replace it just more dynamic good stuff and now we're going to go ahead and take a look at his alt modes. We'll do a separate transformation video going through all of the alt, alt modes, like to each alt mode, back, and, you know, whatnot. He just has four modes, so that's going to make this a long video if we include that in here. So that should be released around the time that this video is released, too, so shouldn't be an issue. All right, and a quick look at its gorilla mode. Not going to spend too crazy much time on this. Because when it comes to a lot of these Gorilla Alt modes, it's like if you've seen them once, you've seen them all. They use the same joints as the robot mode. So, I mean, you've got things like the shoulder joints there, the elbow joints there. They're just positioned differently. You know, um, he loses his knees because the legs sink in, but utilizes the ab crunch to bend over. And, yeah, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You could still, if you want to. Put him like that. He can't really do like the beat it chest or beat in his chest because of the fact that he doesn't have the butterfly and shoulders and the like. Oh, and one thing. All right. So even if you don't watch the transformation video, there's part where you have to move this from this tab to this tab. But what the instructions don't go over is that there are tabs in the forearm too. So that's just something to note because it starts up here, but you have to actually unclip those tabs first before pulling it out the instructions just say pull it out so if you do that and especially if you're hand heavy-handed you're just going to end up breaking it so make sure to 
untap those side flaps too. But yeah, Gorilla Mode, pretty straightforward. I, it's okay. Now one thing to note is that the mouth does open and close. So that's pretty neat. And if I could zoom in on the eyes, you can't really see it here, but there's a nice, nice light piping to the uh, eyes. Let me see if I can actually use the flashlight on my camera. I just thought of that. All right, let's see if that shines through at all. That should. Looks like it from my end. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, so taking a look at its jet mode, I like it. I'm a big fan of Cybertronian stuff, so for me, it works. This is how it's always looked. So, I mean, yeah, this is one of Iron Factory's best homages yet, like, aesthetically. It really nails it on all points. Now, there are wheels. There are wheels on the side. There's a wheel on the bottom. All wheels spin. All wheels can spin at the same time, which is very nice. So, zooming out. Darkening the screen up because that is super duper bright. All right, let's darken that up quite a bit. All right. So just trying to find something to balance this on, get that back. Probably help if we actually focused, huh? Kind of hard to find balance on this, but yeah, it's a nice mode. I mean, I haven't checked out the tank yet. I'm kind of going through this with you guys, but this is easily my favorite alt mode yet. I like it a lot better than the uh, gorilla mode. All right, and lastly, here is its tank or cruiser mode. Well, it's a vehicle. It's a big bulky vehicle with guns. So take that as you will. And again, pretty dead on to the original toy. And then some. Alright, so taking this off the turnstile. All wheels roll, and I mean, there's really nothing more you can ask for with a vehicle mode. I mean, you like the way it looks or you don't, but... In terms of what it is, I mean, an homage as well, the wheels roll, it's, yeah. Alright, so, closing thoughts on this thing. Aesthetically, I think it's an A++++++. Even, you know, Japanese tier system, S++++++. Aesthetically, it is so just dead on. The amount of added detail to it is perfection. This man, again, upscaled, it could be a great classics um optimal optimus even but it man it just playing with this thing joints are either too tight or too loose you know the weapons you'll see during the transformation video the weapon the blaster it comes apart and then the pieces will go in different spots those don't always tab in the best it's just once you get it to the specific pose that you want it's fine but it's just getting there that's way too much of a pain in the ass for a fairly simplistic legend scale figure, if that makes sense. This reminds me a lot more of Iron Factory's older stuff versus what they've been putting out this year. I don't know if this is one of those designs or molds that kind of got put off because I know a lot of that happened. Like, I remember their Dinobots, um, it was like a year or two between when they were shown and when they actually went into production. I don't know if that's the case with this guy as well. But again, like the articulation points and stuff like that, that does make me feel like it's a little bit more modern because it has articulation points out the wazoo. Uh, Could have used the butterfly and shoulder joints. Just not even for just the gorilla mode and beating the chest and stuff like that. Just in general, big huge arms, the ability to even put him back so that you could see his face and his chest a little bit better and things like that for photography. You know, it it would just help and like i said in all modes but overall i think it's something that's not going to bother most people 
Um, when it comes to doing a lot of photography and stuff like that, I'm going to be playing and putting in into poses and situations and things that 90% of people aren't. I think the majority of the consumer base will be more than fine with this pic figure, and I would actually really recommend it. For me personally, though, it's just, it's a pain in the ass. I'm not going to lie. But anyway, let me know what you guys think of this thing in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. Thank you guys, as always, for your support, and I'll see you next review.